Well, for more perspective on Brexit, earlier I spoke to Helen Thomas in London. She's the CEO of financial consultancy firm Blonde Money. And I began by asking for her reaction to the Bank of England governor's latest warning on the impact of a no-deal Brexit. I think he is making very prudent and sensible comments, as of course he is the governor of the Bank of England. And it is true that uh, by the looks of things, no deal would have, of course, a, an immediate impact, which could see, as he put it, businesses close if they are not properly prepared. And I should add, of course, that part of the reason for him making a warning like this right now is to make sure that business is prepared. So I think there's a little bit of that coming into play as well. So certainly a lot of impetus there. And we know that um, Prime Minister Boris Johnson said that he can conjure up a Brexit divorce deal that would be acceptable both to European leaders and to British lawmakers. We're seeing a lot of cautious optimism so far. What do you think is different this time around? Yeah, absolutely. The mood music is changing significantly from where we were even just a few days ago. I think what has changed uh, a couple of things. The first is that politically in the UK, for both the Conservative Party and the Labour Party, another extension is no longer costless because that last extension in March and April ended up with both Conservative and Labour parties plunging in the polls. So they both have an incentive now to, as Boris Johnson puts it, get Brexit done. Um, and then the other thing that's changed, though, is the European Union response, which is very much being led by Dublin. And there was clearly this key meeting between Leo Varadkar, Prime Minister of uh, Republic of Ireland, with Boris Johnson last week. Um, and, of course, there's a sense there, too, that uh, no deal further down the line uh, was a possibility. And maybe now that uh, has appeared to be possible so strongly, uh, it does get people to the negotiating table and budging a little bit on their red lines. Now, this suggestion of having the border in the Irish Sea, that keeps Northern Ireland legally in the UK's customs union, um, but de facto keeps them in the EU's customs union. And that's something the former Prime Minister Theresa May said no Prime Minister should ever do. What are the implications of doing this? Well, of course, the devil is in the detail, and, and as we're talking to one another now, we only know this uh, speculation. Um, of course, uh, I always say that business is about what works and politics is about what sells. And this is all about whether Boris Johnson can sell this to uh, his Northern Irish counterparts, uh, particularly the DUP, or the Unionist Party uh, in Northern Ireland. I think the thing is here that um, this change came around because yeah, Boris Johnson came to the table initially with a deal that the DUP had helped to craft with something called these alternative arrangements, all designed to try and keep this border soft in the island of Ireland. So um, I think, however, it will be very difficult uh, for, any, uh, for everybody to get on board with the concept of an Irish sea border. Uh, however you paint it, that is still quite difficult uh, to sell to unions but it might just be enough with the sales angle on it to say, OK, maybe you see it as a border, but we don't see it as a border, so we're OK with it. I mean, a lot of these games are going to go on in these next few days. And we have seen that French President Emmanuel Macron has suggested that the UK have a technical Brexit and then have more time after the fact to sort of um, allow the talks to bear fruit. But what does that mean in terms of, of trade partners, businesses and expats? Are they still essentially in a holding pattern? Holding pattern is the right phrase for it. And, you know, the thing is, we're all looking for a breakthrough, for certainty, for this to reach a clarity point. But, of course, it is a very complex process and it does need to be sold to everybody. You know, Macron has to sell this uh, to France as well as to uh, the general European Union uh, population. So, um, classic, classically, of course, what you tend to get is they describe it as a fudge of some kind uh, and what Macron there proposed is that kind of fudge and unfortunately yes it doesn't really help if business and people are trying to get clarity uh, I think it will all, all that we do need however is at the end of the day is Britain out of the European Union and if all the leaders are agreed upon that then at least that's a little bit of certainty uh, for how to proceed from here 
And in terms of proceeding, we're, we're just about two weeks away from that October 31st deadline. What are some of the sticking points on the agenda that we should still keep an eye out for? Well, it's absolutely crunch time, and it really is this time. I know we've heard it many times before in this process, but uh, Boris Johnson has very personally and publicly committed to that 31st October deadline. Deal or no deal, we are out. And, you know, he said he would die in a ditch rather than move further on and have an extension of any kind. So the key dates, the key things happening, potentially, we obviously this week, Thursday, Friday, we do have a European Council summit meeting. There is talk, if the text can be agreed, that there would be a deal put to the British Parliament. It could sit on a Saturday, which hasn't happened for almost 40 years. Uh, but then there may well need to be another European Council summit next week, and I would imagine potentially chance for another vote, because by our analysis, we think that the vote will not pass uh, at the first time at least of being asked in Parliament.